Hello and welcome to Perspectives, where we'll take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we'll take a look at people's opinion on such issues. I am Ruth Osime. And I am Ola Torera Majakodumi Onyeru. Today's topic is boundaries. What happens when an ex is hell-bent on crossing boundaries? We have very interesting discussions and special guests coming up, so please stay tuned. Welcome back to Perspective Yonarize News. Dealing with an ex-spouse after divorce can be very difficult, worsens when kids are involved. But as the children's best interests always come first, it is important to form an amicable relationship with your ex as co-parents, which is easier said than done. It's more exasperating when the ex-spouse's behavior is more covert. They can be more sophisticated, more intelligent, and more manipulative. They can hide their unwelcoming behavior behind a mask of polite, kind, and seemingly considerate tone under the guise of working together for the goods of the children. Furthermore, the covertly, covertly toxic ex operates under the belief that their co-parenting relationship with your spouse overrides the importance of the boundaries, boundaries of your own marriage. The issue is, the person who was married to your husband before you, before you knows them very well. They know their strengths and their weaknesses. They know how to push your spouse's buttons and how not to. Because of this, they know how to get their way more so if they remain single while their ex has moved on and remarried. No, it's not a question of being paranoid because strange as it sounds, it's not that uncommon for exes to get back together, especially if they have decided to put the past behind them. Worst case scenarios, the ex-wife now become mistresses, yes, you heard that right, to their ex-husbands. So it's literally up to the new couple to take the bull by the horn and ensure the very demarcated lines of boundaries are drawn no matter what it takes to do so. Such ex-spouses need to learn and accept that they are no longer the ones in charge. If you feel like a trespasser in your, trespasser in your own marriage, student steps need to be taken to salvage it. Interesting. Relationships end, whether we like it or not. And people move on, some to greener pastures and some to red spaces of regret, remorse or revenge. Most relationships, especially of an intimate nature, can be intensely comfortable or addictive. From shared dreams to shared finances to shared homes to shared intimacy. When such relationships end, how do we set boundaries that will be res respected? It's more difficult to set boundaries when the relationship ended abruptly and an ex was not prepared for the sudden separation. It is much worse when a person is completely ghosted, blocked from phone contact while you relocate to a new address and completely move on. Exes in these situations find it difficult to respect boundaries. Some discover your new location and become stalkers, renting or purchasing next door properties. Some even install illegal surveillance to monitor your every move. There's the ex that would tip your driver to give him information on your whereabouts. There's the ex that would get a new SIM every other day just to text you sweet love notes as you keep on blocking. There's the ex that would print Kemi one last time on a public billboard. And there's the ex that would throw a lavish party and invite everyone you know except you. And the footage will be all over social media. Then there are those that would kidnap the kids and turn them against you. Or the ex that would date your parents and then the one that would beg for one last chance only to induce a pregnancy just to have a lifetime bond with you. Crossing boundaries cuts across every facet of life, not just intimate relationships, but also partnerships and friendships. An ex in life of any type of ship can become scorned and dangerous, especially when they had become addicted to you and if boundaries were not well set. Intense discussions coming up shortly, but let's watch this special report. Perspectives will be right back. Setting boundaries in all aspects of our lives is very important if we intend to have a healthy relationship at work and in our personal lives. Whether it's a romantic partnership, family relationship or friendship, it's important to realize that all relationships involve boundaries. And when those boundaries are crossed, it can be detrimental to the relationship. Everybody know my name when I come through. 
establishing and maintaining healthy boundaries can help both parties involved understand what is and isn't acceptable behavior, as well as provide a sense of safety and respect for each other. Respecting your partner is something that shouldn't be taken for granted, even when they feel that a person is a threat to your relationship with them. A very clear example is when an ex is still in the picture as friends. This doesn't sit well with a lot of lovers. Some people have a hard time letting go of their ex. In the process, hurting their new partners who now have to play second fiddle to the old love who still holds a special place in their hearts. In some cases, they still actively meet up and have activities with their said exes, which creates room for trust issues to creep in. The key thing to note when building a healthy relationship is mutual respect, trust, and understanding. Being able to communicate effectively and maintain your own boundaries is also key in a healthy relationship. Today on Perspectives, we will be delving into respecting boundaries and what lovers should do to avoid breaking certain rules that put their relationship in jeopardy. Speaking of boundaries, there's an Yoruba adage that goes, Ti yogi yobala, alangwa onira yewole. In other words, if there's no crack on the wall, the lizard will not be able to penetrate. So when it comes to the issue of boundaries, I sometimes blame the spouse inside the marriage. When you're married to somebody, you, your, your wife or your husband should be your first priority. Okay. You should be able to find a balance. When your, your ex is now imposing his mm -hmm. presence into your union, you want to save your union, and you would rather save your union and yeah. rather than have it destroyed by this ex. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel that a lot of men, it's almost like the mother-in-law and daughter in, and wife situation. Yeah. I feel that the husbands have a major role to play in finding Absolutely. a way to balance this act. Absolutely. I have a good example on that. So there was someone who was engaged for a long time to a guy, and he kept on postponing the marriage. Every time she said, OK, can we set a date, he would say no. So she eventually left him, but it was very abrupt. She met someone else, married that person. This person is treating her really good. Then suddenly he sends $1 million, a huge amount of money to her Who account. Sends one million the ex. The ex husband. Well, he was begging was her back. The ex fiance. The guy that wanted. Had he now married, or was he still single? The ex was single. She moved on. So mm -hmm. she was married uh -huh. and she was happy. And then the ex now sent money into her account, and her friends are like, and she sent it back. And her friends were like, why would you send it back? You need to keep it. And she's like, you want to destroy my marriage? My husband and I are building something that is much more significant than this one him uh -huh. that he sent me. Uh -huh. You know, and people were like, no, you should have kept it. There's so much you can do with that. It can progress you. No, because so. if she had done that, she <laughs> had left the door open for him to even assert his authority, authority even right. further. You know, and then you now have issues of where children, especially where children, children are involved, mm -hmm. they're not exploited. Like you have a case of where the woman, the man has remarried. The woman is single, and she's one with the children. And okay. the husband bends over backwards. The ex-husband bends over backwards to make life okay for her. I mean, by mm. the time you're getting her a nice house, a nice car for the sake of the children, I mean, how much can children eat? How many times do they use the car? Mm. Obviously, you're going to live in the same house. So what he has not done is made your life extremely comfortable. Mm. But for a woman who hasn't moved on, or even if she has moved on, there's something about some I would women that. that they don't they, they don't appreciate the fact that their husband is happy elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Or even some men don't appreciate the fact that their wife is happy elsewhere. So it is that overriding factor yeah. that now determines how they will behave mm -hmm. or not or, or not behave. Mm -hmm. Which is why I feel that the issue of custody should come into play. Mm -hmm. uh, once one party knows that they are entitled to see this child at this time, do you understand? Mm -hmm. It will be less difficult for the people, the person with the child, to manipulate the situation to suit them. Right. You know. So, it's, it's, there's and there's so much baggage between couples when they separate. Mm -hmm. Even when you move on, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've forgotten the baggage or forgotten the experience right. that you went through. And sometimes some of these people carry the baggage from that relationship into their yeah. new relationship. Mm. You begin to judge every person the way your ex is mm -hmm. or was. Which it's not really fair on the person, the new person in your life. Yeah, and you I know? think a lot of times it becomes so toxic when it was abrupt, when they just ghosted you. 
because she ended up, she had been with him for such a long time. It was a long engagement, and he didn't see it coming. Just thought, oh, she would always be there. He was but, cheating but on her. The thing about women, you know, is that we are like sponges. We mm, absorb so, so much. much that one day we just get to and say, you know what? Enough is yeah. enough. Some different women have different thresholds, or different human beings have different thresholds. Mm -hmm. Some will get up and go and say, look, you know what, I'm damned the consequences, I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Some other people, their self-esteem has been so, so, so um, dealt with, yeah. so mismanaged, that they don't have the confidence right. to actually make that necessary necessary move. Mm -hmm. And when they do, you find that the person who was the more dominating party actually was more depend emotionally dependent on yes. this suppressed person. So when the person now leaves, they can't get mm -hmm. over it. They can't believe that the person had the courage exactly. to do so. That same guy, because you know she blocked him, the only thing he had to be able to reach out to her was, okay, I still have her bank account details, so let me send this, let me see if she'll come back. So when she sent it back, he now started wooing her friends, sending one of her friends gifts, started dating the friend, they started going with the friend to events that he knows that this his ex will be at, and started doing public display of affection. Is that <laughs> Did you marry this, him, this friend? No, he's exactly. not married. He's still not married to today. Exactly. <laughs> but some a part of him still wants that lady back. The way she escaped from him, he just can't move on. He can't seem to get over it. He will have to get over it because uh, people have survived breakups, people have survived death, people have survived separations. Mm -hmm. It happens, but he himself needs to go and ask himself certain pertinent questions. Right. Where did he go wrong? Exactly. What did he do She's wrong? married what now. Is he Respect from that this? boundary, but he doesn't. He can't so see how that. much longer? And he's still single. He's how long still. has he been married for? I think it's about three years now. Oh, it's still fresh. It's still fresh. It's still fresh, yes. It's still fresh. Well, he does all these PDAs with her, one of her friends that he's dating now. But it's no, obvious but that, that friend it's that is dating, to, what is she thinking? That will marry her? I mean, you know how it is sometimes oh, in this hard economy when he has sent um, plenty of money to the friend, bought her some... No, I hope she... Her own eyes <laughs> so that friend betrayed her eyes his eyes ex. Because <laughs> even if he does yeah. marry her, because he has dated, he's dating her Most likely he won't marry her. his ex. Mm. Do you understand? She can never be comfortable in the relationship if she's mm. honest with herself. Exactly. Anyway, our guests are coming <laughs> soon. So we're heading for a short break, but stay with us. Because when we come back, it will be our pleasure to bring into the conversation our distinguished guests, Dr. Leila St. Matthew Daniel and Emmanuel Imer. Perspectives will return in just a moment. Welcome back to Perspectives, your Norais News. Moving on to introducing our guests, first off is Dr. Leila St. Matthew Daniels, a recognized personal growth and transformational expert who is also a writer, TEDx speaker, executive coach, and leadership trainer. Dr. Leila has a strong passion to help connect people to their authentic purpose with over 20 years of experience enhancing performance of executives, teams, and organizations. She assists professional women leaders to deal with pressures that come with their high-profile jobs. She is founder of the NGO ACTS Generation, focused on empowering women and offering intervention in the areas of domestic violence and abuse. To date, she has intervened in the lives of over 4,000 women through advocacy, counseling, and empowerment. She believes that when a woman is emotionally, spiritually, and physically sound, only then will she be able to take her position as a healer and a nurturer. Very warm welcome to you. Welcome to Perspectives today. It's a pleasure to be here. And joining us too is Emmanuel Ime, a verified integrative life, marriage and relationship coach. He's a certified emotional intelligence practitioner. He helps people achieve their goals and make positive changes in their lives through a holistic and personal, personalized approach. My God, I didn't drink my coffee this morning. <laughs> he has received extensive training in a variety of coaching techniques. He works with people to identify their strengths, values, and areas for growth and creates an action plan to help them achieve their desired outcomes. He provides ongoing support and guidance to help persons of diverse age groups and life stages stay motivated and on track. Sorry about that, Blonda. Grateful to have you both here with us. Thank you for having us. Perspectives. Anyway, as you can tell from my intro, that today's conversation is a bit... Um, Shake the bottle, make the taste, kind of matter. <laughs> so let me start with you, Miss Leila. Mm -hmm. You know, there is nothing like an ex-wife from hell. And I say that as a woman. I'm not even okay. being 
biased. Because there are some ex-wives that just are difficult to work with. A very learned friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, sent me an article, which is what inspired me to actually discuss today's topic. And it was a letter written by a woman who had left her husband. Okay. And she, at the time she left her husband, she had three kids. She had had enough, and he was, it was a woman issue. He had too many women, blah, blah, blah. And she left. Now, a few times, sometime down the line, things were not as easy for her anymore because this time, a lot of perks that she used to get as a wife, she wasn't getting them anymore from her husband. And the bills were getting more and more difficult to pay, pay and her lifestyle was getting more and more difficult to manage. So she now becomes what she hated her husband for, a mistress. So he married and moved on? Yeah, yes, he had married, married and moved on. Yeah, now, to married. make matters worse, her husband, she and her husband now started talking and she now becomes her husband's mistress. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So the, 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 what, the, what she threw out was, is it really worth to throw the baby? Is it really worth throwing the baby away with the bath water? So what I want to ask is that when you're a, a, a second wife in that situation, what do you now do? When you are a second when wife, you are, the, the new wife at home, and you now find that your ex-wife is now your husband's mistress. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Will she find out? Did she find out in the real? Well, story? she didn't say that she found out, but I'm just okay, using the scenario. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you what, find out. Yes. What do you now do as the the, the second wife? It's going to be a very tricky and very um, sensitive situation because yes, it is. it's no matter what it is, the fact remains that her husband is cheating. As far as you know, relationships are concerned. You, you, you married me, for better, for worse, and now there's somebody else. She's your ex-wife. If she was that good, why did you leave her in the first instance? You know, all kinds of things a woman yeah, would But time do. can heal wounds. No, time can, can change perception yes. of what actually caused uh, the separation. Mm. Now, again, the need to look after um, certain needs of a person could change the perception of the other party that, well, I could have tolerated him, maybe, you know. But you feel like this after you have now been after out. After you have now been out. Yes. You and you've seen that after, the other side of the fence is not so, he's not so green. Yeah. So the man who cannot take his eyes off what left, mm -hmm. and then the woman who is part of this triangle, um, the, the, the one at home is not going to find it very funny I mean, at look all. look at the Camilla and Charles situation kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, he's not going to find it very funny at all. But then she has to be very careful how she manages the situation. So how does she manage it? She has to, ah, she has to begin to find out communication because communication is very, very critical. And if the ex-wife could come in at that point in time, because there are many men who have divorced, moved on, ex-wives have tried to get in touch with them and things like that, mm -hmm. and they put a no-no there. Mm -hmm. So the man himself has a question mark. Whatever made that woman leave, this one that is inside the house should begin to put her head down and be realistic. Does she want that marriage? She has to be realistic. Does she wants that marriage what is the benefit for her is she going to make trouble what will be her uh, husband's reaction to all of these things but the first thing is to sit down and communicate with him the why what, the, what, the, what about the woman herself can she communicate with the ex-wife woman to woman ah it all depends it's a very tricky it all depends on because when you say woman to woman are we on that level that we can have such an open, unbiased, unemotional um, conversation. But if, it's, if, it's, if you are going through so going through hell in your marriage because of this one person, well, the, the, well, like I said, it's this, this woman that is in will have to take chances first with the husband, communicate with the husband, and with the woman outside. What if because if the woman outside tells her off because now she's in a position she knows how to hold that man she has been with him for years yes, yes, you know yes. she knows his uh, where to push right, the button you know, uh -huh. open the button cancel the bottle so she could turn around because now she wants that woman's position and she could say i have no business in whatever is going on with you and your husband but doesn't the new wife always respect that especially if he has children with the first wife that there will be some sort of relationship not a sexual between, relationship yeah, but not a sexual relationship yeah. or, or, right. emotionally, but that or can, emotionally attached the relationship. chance of that can happen because of that the children he can go there anytime just to see his that's, kids that that mm -hmm. is why 
it's the man that is concerned, you understand? There are men who have handled it very well, but there are some men who are weak. I consider such mm -hmm. men very weak mm -hmm. and wanting to eat their cake and, and have it. Yes. So talking to the other woman is a risk too as well. But you asked one question before we now, you said, what should she do? Mm -hmm. the, the decision is hers to make. We always say that when you cannot change something, you either leave that situation or you change your attitude towards it. So she either sits down and says, well, I'm here to stay. Let him be having his nookie nookie on the side, but I'll make sure I am on top of it and so far and no further. How, how are you on top of it? Because there are two categories yeah. of women who go back to their exes. Some might, some might go back there just to... Get yeah, just to get they what you want. want. The, cow. the mm -hmm. other one wants the cow. The, the other one now wants the cow and feels entitled. Yeah. After all, when he didn't have anything, I was the one that was there. Yeah. Especially if she played a very him. prominent role in the growth of, of the that financial man. growth. That's why mm -hmm. I said that the woman inside there has to accept whatever it is that comes That's to her. That's a bitter pill to it swallow. It is a bitter pill to swallow. Because if she tries to make problem or, or create a, a nasty situation, that man who is weak himself, this other woman who has strength and has gone out, seen the other side is not as green, and comes back, and she has children three and all of that, she could actually send that other one out. He will begin to now... I've, I've, I've heard uh, yeah, he will, he will begin before. to now spend more time. Yeah. So if she turns into a nag at home, he'll just say, look, I don't need all this, and then begins to stay more. And the more he stays, they will begin to go I've back. It has been known. Where the, the old wife, yeah. the ex-wife, came started visiting the house. Mm -hmm. And of course, when she left, all the cooks, all her staff they remained. Know, yeah, they know so this her. was a new madame they now knew. So the wife started visiting. This is the old wife who started visiting the house. The next thing, the new wife would say, oh, we are cooking ABC. She would say to the cook, the cook would be like, no, madame, don't talk, say. <laughs> she allowed it. And she ended up leaving. Yeah. They ended up edging her out of the marriage. Yeah. Now, speaking of which, um, Emmanuel, there are some men that don't know how to balance. When you have a domineering ex-wife and you have a wife in the house, a domineering ex-wife who is using your kids to exploit you, who is not sticking to agreements, who is not sticking to the rules and regulations that you have designed or you have, you have both agreed on, what do you now do? But before you answer, let's go on a break. We'll go on a break. Don't leave us. So this is a hot topic. Yeah? We'll be right back. See you soon on Perspectives. Emmanuel, remember I asked you the question before the break. Yes. That why don't why don't men know how to balance situations where the ex-wife is giving you horrors? She's not sticking to the agreement. You've done everything that she wants for the children. You've given them house. You've given them car. Mm. But the, you know that she wants more time, and you cannot give her the time because you have your wife. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it affects the wife at home. So yeah. how do you how do you as a man manage to find a balance to make your ex-wife happy and but more importantly make your wife at home happy? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Quite. Right. Um, I like to say somebody once said that marriage is like watching cable TV. Mm. Do you know what that is? Okay. They having cable TV can only watch one channel at a time. Yeah. And so so when you try to watch more than two channels, you're going to be distracted. It's like I'm sure it must have happened to us. You have an, your iPad, your laptop, your phone, and you're trying to do this. Something here. gets missed. Yes, out. something has to give. You know. Of course, we don't want to go to how the relationship got to where Forget it is. That one. Uh, like we don't want to go there either. You know. So women can be more manipulative than men. We all yeah. know that, right? I, yeah, you just she looked at her. <laughs> I need the help because she agreed. By nature, <laughs> men are avoiders. Most men, actually, are avoiders. You know, so when they get themselves into that fix, they just want to avoid. They freeze. So it now becomes the women, you know, and are fighting. And I've seen a situation where some of those women, the ex and the current one, got together and began to give the man some good hell. That's, not, if, that's the minority. That, that's the, my, I'm, I'm seeing a situation. <laughs> yeah, it's not like that. You know, so most men don't know how to handle that. And I know why. Uh, science has proven it beyond doubt. Now we know that um, they say men have right brain, women have left, left brain. Yes and no. Mm. Yes, every human being has both right and left brain. But the woman is the only creature, human being, that has the ability to use both right and, and left, the left at, the same at the same time. time. Mm. At the same time. But don't you think if they have things like um, 
custody. Go, go, actually go to court and actually do a proper custody rights. Don't yes. you think that would also help? Yeah, that, that, you know, that should help. But, you know, but, but the scenario you painted... Because I know many men but the scenario from you the days have been ruined. Yes. Because the mother, the step, the first wife, e exactly. used to release the children exactly. when, when she was supposed to. Exactly. So if they have a custody rights, then that will set boundaries. But we're talking about a woman who is overtly possessive. How do you deal with that? I mean, we see it in wedding ceremony, mm -hmm. we see it in birthday ceremony, and they just come and boom, they take out the whole place. And again, there, there, there's something about when you give, when you give to a project, mm -hmm. it's hard to just let go. It would have been good if every relationship that breaks up, whether married or not married, ends with a win-win. Mm -hmm. But most times it's not that way. Mm -hmm. It's only a win-lose or a lose-win. But you have not answered right. the book of the answer question. Answer the question. Oh, Why do men? What do, do you do to salvage this situation? To salvage this situation. Because at the end of the day, set boundaries. The, the second wife is unfair mm -hmm. for her to carry the burden of your mistakes. No, no. Unfortunately, if the man has set ground rules from onset, uh -huh. there needs to be ground rules. When you have a break, let it be a clean break. But it never is. It's what we're saying. No, no, no. Well, in some situation, it never is. Never is. But in some situation, there has been. But Even, in those situations that it never is, what do you do? So and it's like, is it me? I mean, this guy is no, talking. No, 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 no. Okay, so no, this is where trying, we come in. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we come in. This is where coaches and counselors now come in. Mm -hmm. You need to get a third party because you are not always objective. As, as you think. You need a third party to come in. You're about calling Boromiro. You need someone to come in between and say, let me hear, what hear us Boromiro out. Really mean for those who uh, if you can explain the first, Boromiro is like, um, how do you say? Um, help me jump back. Help me. I, I, that's yeah, the only way to explain this. Yes. Uh, you know, can't be an like that. Yeah, but you're a counselor. Mm -hmm. So if I, I come to you, my husband yes. and I come to you, yes. in this situation, I want to leave you with advice that you have given that is practical. Okay. One, we don't give advice. We don't just give advice that way. You know, number two, we'll coach you to yeah, we, we, we have to go back history. Mm -hmm. Because on air right now, there are things I would say that people just run and say, oh, he said it. It's on air. We have to go. Every individual has their own story. We have to find, how did they even meet? You know, sometimes I've counseled a couple where the, married, the man married the woman, or the woman married the man out of pity. Let me just pity him. He doesn't have a father. He doesn't have a mother. And she ended up becoming his father and mother. And the guy took her for granted. Now they are... Separated, so basically, what you're saying is yeah. that custody, which is what I see as a practical answer, is usually one of the best ways to of course, yes. manage a situation like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if the child is supposed to be with you at a certain time, from a certain time, to, and it's not, you can go to court. Of yeah. course. If yeah. need be. Now, if, if I may ask something, when I was coming here, I felt I was going to be in a siege. Sieged by all, all these three women, and whatever. No, no, no. The question is, no, the question. I know that the women are on the spotlight. What if is the man? How will you handle that? If if well, the woman, the man too is also can be also be as difficult, especially if you are the one that left him. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. And you have now moved on, but yes. you have a child because yes. it's always this child in between you mm -hmm. that the that, mind that, that that demands this unnecessary. Um, Co-parenting. Yes. Do you understand? So now, why will a woman not allow the man? To also have custody of the of, of, of the of no, the child. No, 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 don't get me no, wrong. No, no. I've seen situations where the woman and the man share custody. He's allowed okay. to see the kids at a certain time. Okay. But he is constantly phoning. Oh. Oh, okay. where are they? Oh, where's your mother? Where did she go to? Uh, who yes. did she go with? Do you understand? Okay. Using the kids as a monitoring, like a monitoring, monitoring spirit. Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. To monitor them. Yes, so men can be like that. So she now finds herself. Almost living her life as if he was still in her life. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And resentful right. too. As so, well. so that in itself is now, resentful may, as well. It works may, both maybe ways. Maybe the child can be coached to be able to ask all those questions. No, that but you cannot ask the child to lie. No, no. I mean, like, if she, if it's okay, it's okay. Now, if, if the man is overtly on her, he can say, "Listen, we can't do this this way." And that's why we need to go back to ground rules. If there were no ground rules, they would set boundaries. It's very, very important. I no, but how do you set a boundary? Sorry, Auntie. How do you set a boundary for a man, ex-husband, who mm -hmm. is too imposing? Then you get somebody else to come in and say, you can get a lawyer or, or get a coach to say, you know what, this yes. is not healthy. Yes. It's, it's not okay. healthy. You need to move on. You need um, and intervention. Most likely, so, the man hasn't really moved on. To coaches. Uh, yeah. It all depends. <coughs> I mean, yeah, no, no, that's they you will sit down correct. and let the coach no, come and tell correct. him how to run his most life. Most coaches I know are men. women. Mm. I, I asked her, just by the way, I asked my wife a question. What, what, what do you call a man who's, uh, someone who specializes in women's issue, a doctor? And she said, gynecologist. And I said, what do you call a doctor who specializes in a man's thing, men thing? Anybody know? Actually, that's never exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. No, but there must be somebody that does. No, that. there is actually. No, she had to Google it. She found that okay. exactly. <laughs> but the thing is that women are the ones that seek help. They're the ones that talk. Mm -hmm. The men will just suck it up. 
Yeah, because of, because of this macho, yeah, it's macho man society. kind of thing. The society, the society. And, and a lot of people now, are, they are being told that focus on the men too as well. Like the man who you said, um, you know, it was you, Ruth, always calling in to the ex-wife, the yes. children and everything. He has insecurity mm -hmm. issues. Absolutely. He has a lack of confidence, lack of self. A lot of men have, have that. You understand, but they hide behind the machoism, mm -hmm. and so when things happen, that controlling um, side of them comes out. Mm -hmm. But they, it can be helped because I've dealt with men that it, they can be helped when men do listen. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. when when they really believe that they they have something wrong, yeah. and it's a man who accepts that. He hmm. may have I'm a situation. When a man has it's easy. That's, 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 oh, that's the minority. I have had where men have called me and said, my wife wants to leave me and I need help. Okay. When I hear that, yeah. the man is broken. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's in a weakened state, yeah. yes. And he, he, he actually, somehow, down the line, has recognized that he has done overdue mm -hmm. in what he's doing. And if more men stop looking at the machoism and seek help, Mm -hmm. That is what support is all about. Um, mm -hmm. If they don't want a female um, um, coach, mm -hmm. experience too, experience, yeah. not a young coach, no. you understand. Mm -hmm. Book knowledge mm -hmm. is different from putting yeah. together yeah. experiential knowledge mm -hmm. and book knowledge. Absolutely. And then the women too, because uh, let's talk about our society. You see, talking to a third party who wants to help you, it's a, it's a new thing for a woman to come and say, look, I, I do need help. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we always think we know it all. Mm -hmm. We always think, because like you said, we are nurturers mm -hmm. and we are given power from within yeah. to deal with a lot of things. Okay, but considering the men now, what about when a couple has separated, the woman has remarried, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the man too has remarried, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's certain, you know, every parent has certain rules that they, 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 put, they lay down mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And what about if the man is not happy about the way his ex-wife is handling the children, maybe concerning certain issues? And he wants to voice it, and he wants to discuss it with her. Where does he draw the line? Because don't forget, there's another father that the man is living under. Oh, they can, but they are parents. They yeah. can communicate. They can co-parents. Co they can co-parent. Yeah. So they can. long as you are open to your yeah. wife, you are open to your but husband. What do they disagree? If they disagree, they will disagree to her. Even when they are married, they, they always disagree. They have they to disagree. disagree. But yeah. the thing is, right from the root, a lot of us must put the children first. Yeah. Like you said earlier, some use the children as a, as weapon, a weapon of mm -hmm. various weapon. things. Some hide I've behind the children. Right. Yes. Unhappy yes. Yes. Unhappy. Yes. I think yes. 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 And after some time, when the kids started getting married, having kids and having ceremonies, mm. they would invite both moms. Wow. And then the real mom will be upset that the stepmom is taking her position, taking her mm. position, coming to her event. What sort of advice would you give for the man, knowing that this is the real mom? Yes. Yeah, so, but this new mom also took a part in raising this child. Yeah, I've I've experienced that quite a number mm. of times, and it's not uh, it's an ugly thing really if you really see what happened now sometimes you see some um real mom that are very kind appreciative mm -hmm. of what the um present mom let's call her the absent mom you know the present mom has done in the life of the child and they are mm -hmm. very but there are some lines you can't cross uh if you must even get get to that line you should seek advice and find out like a situation i was sharing where uh the newly wedded are about to wed mm -hmm. insisted that both of them must wear the same I should be. I was saying, no, okay, even if I'm going to wear the, 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 the absentee mom and the oh, okay. whatever, it's oh man. So you just said the child. The yeah, yeah, they, they, they so to, like this. Like they that. want to they unify. unify it. Yes, and, and you probably most time you see uh, a, a woman who is like, okay, well, I can do it. It's okay, mm -hmm. but one always like no. Mm -mm. If I'm going to wear the same jewelry, my house will be bigger than yours. <laughs> but you it. also have situations where, even though. Um, um, the, the man has a, a second wife. Mm -hmm. mm. The children grew up with the first wife. Yeah. They were brought up by their mother. So the, the, she wasn't really an upset mother per okay. se. Yes. I feel in such situation, if your child, and the child too might want her mother 
doesn't want anybody to share her mother's day with her mm -hmm. or with him. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel in such a situation, the child. when you are faced with it, mm -hmm. as the second wife, you can step back. You yes, should. Yes, if the child you doesn't understand. want you there, of course. You, you can step back yeah, because I've course. seen instances where the woman insists on going. You now find <laughs> the real mother frowning all through the wedding mm -hmm. because somebody else is stealing her shine. Well, so what if the real mother was never there and is the stepmother that did all the work raising we'll of this child? Mm -hmm. We just mm -hmm. spoke about the stepmother yeah. that brought the child. Yeah, home. yeah. But we also spoke. We don't underestimate the strength between mother and child. Yeah. Sometimes because just because she's a biological mother, mm -hmm. you tend to be a bit more accommodating of her excesses. Yeah. And if as a second wife, as a new wife in the house. It is obvious that that first wife does not want your presence. Mm -hmm. What if the wife, child is closer to that new wife? No, that's what I'm saying. We're giving, we're two, giving scenarios. two scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. We're giving two scenarios. Mm -hmm. And if the child genuinely wants her mother or his mother to be the star of the day, mm -hmm. I think give it to her. Do, it's just yeah, give it to her. There is no big deal. There's I know. No big deal. I give know. Yeah, I know of a couple. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, these things happen mm -hmm. abroad. The son was getting married, mm. and there's no way the mother of the son is um, w w was a, Europe, um, a, a British lady, okay. and the second wife stayed behind in Nigeria. He went with mem a few members of his family to the wedding, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. And it depends on how the second wife has confidence in herself. That's mm -hmm. why I said, know who you are. Who mm -hmm. are you? Mm -hmm. Are you confident in your own skin? Mm -hmm. Or do you need another person to validate you? Mm -hmm. If you, you don't need that, let them have their day. Have their and day. then you know you will now put boundaries in your own side too. You will have your day because whatever you use, Whatever the behavior you uh, show, when it comes to your turn in certain ways, mm. you can caution him. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What if she invites that new mom's sisters, friends, mm. Why should relatives? she do that? No. Because she had had a bond with them. No, no. Is that her no, no, no. Cousins, oh, you mean the uh, family girl. members? You mean the girl? Yeah, so she has biological mom. She now has oh, the, that, that yeah, mom. the second mom that brought up the child. Yes. So the mother, the real mother doesn't want the second mom there. Mm -hmm. But the girl has invited the second mom's, mom. mom's the, friends, the, the mm. grandma. Was the real mother an absentee mom? The real mom was absent for a while, and during that time, she got very close to so the, the stepmom step -mom and the stepmom's okay. family. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to attend her wedding, be there for her. They the are real mom is a dysfunctional is human being. <laughs> yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because there is no true. reason for her not to want... But, but that's when the emotional blackmail yes, comes Yes, emotional in. blackmail. Mother, how can yeah. you do this? She's blah, dysfunctional. Blah, blah. And, you know, if you, like I say, if you're confident in yourself as right. your mother, let them have their day. Even if they invite the friends, me, mm. I will let them have their day. Because what do I want to prove? Mm. I might just be mischievous enough to now have a party afterwards mm. yeah. for yeah. the yeah. couple. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. I will have the party, yeah. call my own people and everything. She's had her day. I will have my day with the child I brought up. But it's a compromise. Yeah, because speaking of um, in-laws or speaking of mothers, you also have events where the husband's mother it says a birthday or the husband's yeah. side is celebrating something. Then you now have this ex-wife hmm. that is larger than life. <laughs> That's okay. We'll go on the break so that we can continue. With this <laughs> so don't leave us. We'll be back soon. See you right back. You know, during the break, we were talking about um, domineering spirits, people who, have, who are very strong personalities. Mm -hmm. And you said something about, oh, that um, what is more respectful is when the person is still hum humble. And I was telling you that humility right. and, and success, success, they no, almost don't go, don't go. Yeah. you know, they're almost like oil and water. So when you do mm -hmm. see those that, that have both traits, it's very admirable. Well. Mm -hmm. Now, like, you also, like I also said, it is this domineering spirit that is, af affects every other aspect of the relationship with your ex. Mm -hmm. Either they don't want the second wife to play a role in their children's lives, mm -hmm. and even when, like I said, the ex-husband or the ex-family is doing something, he invites uh -huh. you as the mother of the children. Mm -hmm. Then you now get there and decide that you want to take over the whole party. Mm -hmm. If you are richer, if you are more confident, if you are more successful, you would overshadow, of course, yeah. the second wife in question. So now, in such situations, I always feel a bit sorry for the second wife because mm -hmm. she wasn't there when this thing happened. She didn't ask for it to happen. And mm -hmm. she might actually be a genuinely nice person. Mm -hmm. So in such a situation, as the husband, don't give me one of these, your uh, analysis. Uh, analysis to give you outright. <laughs> now, as a husband, when you tend to know the tendency 
of what your, your the, the characteristic traits of your, of your ex wife. Mm -hmm. What are the things you should put in place first? Mm -hmm. And you, are you going to warn her and say, please, oh, come that day? I beg. Mm -hmm. I only want so so and so amount of your friends mm -hmm. because you know we are we are already sorted. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? How do you now begin to manage her excessive ways? To make your home be more at peace and also your children be more at peace with their new stepmom. Absolutely. I mean, what you just said right now underscores the need for us to have pre some kind of communication, communication. Before, yes. before. So, so that's what I advise everyone. And every time I've gotten myself involved in, in things like this, we start talking even years be, you know, before the events, months before the events. And sometimes we have to go visit, we have to call people in, we have to settle issues. Because what we see is the events and all the fireworks that happen. So we want to reduce that to the barest minimum. You know, bring it down. Assuming you're talking yeah. to somebody who will listen. Well, well, okay, now, so this is what we'll do. We'll try the first step, the second step, the third step. There are stages that you go. Now, if this person is bent on, I'm going to come there and they will see kind of attitude. Then we have to put some, um, you know, measures yes. in place. Yes. Basically, we'll put some measures in place. What do you mean measures? Ah, I'm, I'm not sure if, I'm, if I should be sharing this on well. Yes. 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 There are things put some do. measures because sometimes... Um, and, and the measure is only known by just a by few people. Just a few people. people. Yeah. If, okay. for instance, there are some cases, I'm sure, where you will discuss and everything and mm -hmm. the ex-wife will say, yes, but at the back, say, I will deal mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And I don't but, know why But that like is. you said, if mm -hmm. the man knows, he will put some measures in yeah, place. Yeah, we'll put some measures. With the right people, mm -hmm. watch her. Yeah. I've seen where they block. We, we plant people there. Yeah. They block. And we preempt excesses. situations. Really? Yeah. 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 You won't know. <laughs> but you will, you will see uh, where people are walked out or whatever, but you don't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. You'll find where all of a sudden the, the microphone will go off. You're not going to speak. <laughs> you grab the microphone. I mean, you talk to the, the, the sound crew. You should grab the microphone, mm -hmm. turn it off. We're not going to. I mean, these things happen. With a, a very troublesome yes. Mm -hmm. These things happen. And, and I, I still say, a troublesome woman, if you are a troublesome woman and you have that spirit of anger in you and mischief and everything, seek help. Because mm -hmm. it's not good for your health as well. Mm -hmm. yes, because it will affect other areas. I find that people who have that kind of character have medical issues. Certain yes. medical mm -hmm. issues. You think it's medical. Or sometimes. No, no, it leads to medical issues. was so horrible to her. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. And she's still like so bitter. I know yes, her. Look, that, look at that word. Still so bitter. Look at that Bitterness. Look at that word. Bitter. Mm. Who is going to be affected? She is the one going to still be affected. So she needs to say to herself, that experience was very bad. It's not what I really wanted. But do I want to carry the chain mm. of that experience with me? Because the other party has gone on. He's moved on. You mm. are bitter. You are soaking in it. Mm. No. Let's go. But it takes time. Yeah. And I know the funny thing is that even when the other party, whether the man or the woman, goes ahead and remarries, mm -hmm. It's not that you, you, the ex, wants them back. It's mm. that how dare you be happy? Yeah. yeah. How dare you go and get married and believe you, you have no right to be happy when you have not. left me in this emotional exactly. mess? So do you need to, at the end of the day, it comes back to you. You need to ask yourself, did I come to this world for this man? Like I tell people, I say, let me ask you straight off. Before you met him or before you met her, you mm -hmm. existed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you are leaving, Nobody is taking the other party with. During this period of time, certain things have happened. Get a hold of yourself. It's not going to be easy. It's not easy. Well, it's not easy. With women who say, oh, I made him who he is. Baby, before we met, he was... No, but there are cases like that. that. And become very... There are cases like that. Now, this is why I recommend anyone who wants to remarry, it's they a good thing. Yeah, there's a, a particular kind of counsel. You have to go... They have to your, go through. Your ex needs to know. Mm. I need to find out how did you guys break up? How was mm -hmm. was it mutual? Was there legal whatever? You're just gonna you're not gonna jump into a relationship when you have yeah when you're not emotional yeah but especially those men who have now made it big yeah and they were I mean I remember that I met an elderly friend of mine who she was she had four children for the man and the man is dead now he was in his eighties or whatever so I had to tell me to go and see her she was talking about her you know when they were younger she worked for to pay his school fees wow. Before he became who he was, she worked to pay his school fees. Then they just supported him and supported him before she now went back to school. Anyway, cut long story short. Meets life um, crisis. crisis. She now marries a woman older than her mm. with her own children. Wow. So she was now driven out of the house 
and the wife with the children now came in. And 40 years later, mm. she was still talking about the situation yeah. as if it yeah. happened yeah. to her yesterday. Yes. She yes. yes. hasn't let Don't go. And she's traumatized. To her she's living yesterday. in trauma. Yeah. I, I, I always say, you need to work on yourself because you need to be happy. You understand? And you see, the funny thing about what I think you said, when you leave a relationship, before you go into another one, mm. you must find, closure. you must mm. have a closure, mm. or closure else that energy that you left with, you will mm. attract the very same situation yeah. Yeah. that happened to you. Then you say, why do? Why does it happen to me all the time? Mm. What mm. are you giving out and attracting? Because yeah. when you hold on to certain things, you will get the person, mm. whether male or female, it yeah. happens like that. So it comes down to who are you, what do you mm. want? And if you are the troublesome woman, there is nothing to be proud of. Yeah. You need to seek help. Same thing as the man. If men too are very troublesome, yeah. you know, so vindictive, many. some of them uh -huh. can be uh -huh. so vindictive, yeah. you understand, because they are annoyed, especially if the woman, the woman is, one that left. is the one that left, mm. and they don't care and everything. The mm -hmm. man is a walking dysfunctional human being, yeah. and he will never be happy yeah. at the end of the as day. As I say, a man that is broken hearted, 20 women get broken hearted until he recovers. Touché, mm. until he recovers. Uh, like a woman, she can't you know, have yeah. 20 men. And, and if you're interested, uh, in NLP, there is something we call the timeline therapy. Yes. Where we actually take you back to the point of that dysfunction and help you let go. And but another free. last question I want to ask. Yes. Another question. What about when the children don't get along? Your children and his children don't get along. Briefly, if you can just give me Handle parenting. <laughs> it's parenting. Parenting. You know, your children parenting. from your marriage and these children, yes, they don't yes, get yes, along. Yes, like yes, you just have to manage them. Communication. Yes. You just have to manage them. But a timeline is expected so, to, so we, to we, get a timeline after results some results time. Well. It will real results. And it all depends on the parents. What mm. are you saying? What are yeah. you saying? Because children react to messages mm. that yes. they get. Yes. Yes. Whether spoken or body language. So, what mm -hmm. are you saying to them? Usually, it's caused by the parents. Yes, it's caused um, by the parents. So, they fight on the ground there because yeah. they know things that probably you don't know that they know from one party mm -hmm. to the other. And it happens a lot of times too in the polygamous homes. So, yeah. parents basically learn parent, parenting to focus. skills. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they are called blended families. families. Too shame. Yes. They are called thank families. you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. I enjoyed thank you so myself. So much. Absolutely. Thank thank you. Time is never long enough. Oh. It just flies so fast. Yeah. You know, thank you once again thank for being. Our nice, guests. Yes. Good episode. Anyway, the best way to set boundaries is to get clear picture on them. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you have reacted to these situations in the past and share why it is or is not working for you anymore. Then plan how you're going to respond when it happens again. When boundaries are set, there's bound to be backlash. Expect it. Often the person who is affected most by the boundaries tries to push them. They want to see how serious you are. Even if you know your goals, you will miss a trick if you cannot communicate them properly. Stay consistent. It will pass, but know it may have to get worse before it gets better. And always remember, as I always say, life is a learning curve. So that's all we have time for today. You've been watching Perspectives here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osime. And with me, Ola Torera Majekudumi Oniru. Pure love and romance is such a beautiful thing that every human deserves to experience continuously, but sometimes breakups are very necessary. Don't let your emotions run high and cause you to be that scorned ex. Keep yourself cool, calm, collected, and move on to the next. There are 7 billion people in the world and lots of opportunities for you to push your dreams higher at any point in time. The key to a better world is humanity. Our world needs a much stronger dosage of healthy love, care, and compassion. Thank you for watching Perspectives. Thank you to our special guests for joining us today. Have a great weekend and see you all soon. Goodbye.